another question here. This one is from Nova mm-hmm. on Facebook. I have an art studio that uses a lot of physical materials. What's the best way to organize art supplies when you don't have much storage? Mm. Now, Kristen, you do a great job of organizing the things that are essential mm. as opposed to organizing everything and then just uh, you know, clearing the space of the clutter but retaining the clutter. When I look at your space, uh, whether it's your pantry or just your home in general, recognize that people often need supplies, especially if you're someone like Nova and she has a lot of physical materials, art supplies. What's um, What are some techniques that you use Mm -hmm. to organize a lot of these things so they don't become clutter? A lot of our clients are artists because Mm -hmm. their work actually does require a lot of materials and tools. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to say, well, you need to just get rid of it all, you know, because then they wouldn't. There usually is a little bit of minimizing and it depends client to client because it's like, oh, well, you've had these fabrics for 10 years and let's pass them on to someone who will use them and get value from it. Um, But this question reminds me of a client who I worked with when I was first starting off, and she was a textile artist. And when we came into her studio, everything was just in piles on the floor. And the studio had 20-foot ceilings. So I said, hey, what if we built shelves and maximized the vertical space and organized based on the type of project and all of her tools were organized by things that cut, things that attach, like really simple concepts, not hyper-specific. And she was like able to get so much more done, so much more created. Um, So yeah, I would just say, um, what opportunities do you have? Does your space offer that you might be missing out on? Is it vertical space? Is there a closet that's got a hanging bar that maybe you should put shelves in? I don't know without seeing it, but I would look for those opportunities. Mm, Yeah. Thinking outside the box. We got a friend Mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Missoula, Montana, Monty Dolak, name drop. Anyway, I'm famous (laughs) artist. Um, We we go to his place all the time. He's got a really pristine, clean, uh, very well-decorated house. And in his art room, it's so funny because he'll take us back there all the time, like to show us what he's working on. And he's always apologizing for all of his art supplies. I'm like, dude, you're an artist. (laughs) And on top of it, he has them organized so well. And he has like thought outside of the box with all of his uh, supplies and how he organizes them. So like he has the mechanics tool drawers Mm -hmm. that he organizes a lot of that stuff. He has filing cabinets where he keeps um, like different magazines and he has them like perfectly filed like alphabetical order. It would be like if Joshua Fields Melbourne was an artist, like yeah. this would be his <laughs> his system. <laughs> but what I really appreciate about him is he's always questioning, like, do I need all of this stuff? Yeah. And sometimes he's like, yeah, he'll, you know, see a stack of pictures or whatever it is. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that in the, in, in the future anytime soon. So he gets rid of it. So it's about I mean, yeah, thinking outside the box, but also being able to realize when you do have too much and being able to let go and figure out what you can let go of when you're, you're feeling overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And quite often there are supplies that we need to organize. People often think I'm against the container store just because I will, I, I, I will bash the fact that we often go there as if it is the solution to our clutter. No, that's it. If you have a bunch of clutter, the container store isn't going to really help at all. Mm. However, if you have a bunch of things that actually need to be organized, art supplies, things that you actually use, then it can be a wonderful way to sort through those things in an organized fashion that looks good, it's calm, it's peaceful. But the opposite is not true. If you don't have all those supplies and you go buy the bins, remember we watched that video a few months ago where it was this like TikTok video and it was a storage solution for garages. And it's just a bunch of bins that go on the ceiling basically. And at first I saw that, I'm like, oh, that looks great. I could use, I'm like, wait a minute. I'd I'd have to buy things and then put into those bins. And so that might work really well for someone who needs to store a bunch of things on the roof of their garage. Mm. But for me, it would just be a bunch of empty bins. It wouldn't Mm. make any sense Mm. because I got rid of the things that would otherwise be stored in those Yeah, they're at your neighbor's house. (laughs) (laughs) One day he's going to go to his neighbor's and be like, hey, man, can I borrow that again? You should show him the solution and be like, hey. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> this will really help you out. This will maybe be way more aesthetically pleasing when for I me. When I come you, over. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kristen, at what point do you go, do you take a client to a place like the Container Store mm-hmm. and help them organize their things? I was thinking about this because yesterday Bex was doing our monthly sort of decluttering and she's getting rid of things. I think she knew you were going to be here. So she's like, <laughs> I, I don't want to be judged. <laughs> and so she's getting rid of, of, of random things, which I'm always grateful for. Anytime she gets rid of something, especially when it's not mine, um, I feel great about that, right? But also, I even recognize in our home, there, there's probably a place for more sort of bins or organization systems that would benefit us. We've gotten down to this minima. Mm-hmm. And um, and now it's like, okay, maybe adding a few organizing elements would actually increase the peace or the calm in that yeah. space. Yeah, it's definitely a different balance in each space. But um, the point at which we would go to the container store or similar is at the end of the process. Mm. We never show up with containers because oftentimes we're able to repurpose what the client already has. Um, or there's just really no, I think... Yeah, I think people get really overwhelmed going to places like the container store because they think that it's the solution. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's just no way to know what you actually need until you've sorted and minimized. And at the same time, you don't want to open up a closet that you have minimized and have everything crash out, you know, because it's not contained and it's loose. Um, So, yeah, I think at the end, if needed, um, oftentimes we have things that we can repurpose, though. Mm -hmm. I and in the meantime, end. go ahead. No, I just, I, just, I just love that end with the containers. End not with, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah don't start with it because then you're hiding the clutter. But now if you're truly organizing what remains, everything that remains, yeah, n- that's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, the limitations sort of breed creativity. You might realize like all the things I was going to hide in those containers, maybe I don't need them at all. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.